Have you ever wondered what a solar system just like this actually produces throughout the year and how much money does it save? Well, I'm going to share all of the numbers of this with you and break it down in an easy to follow way. Hey guys, Garrett here. Let's start with a little background of the system that I had installed on my house. It consists of 18 panels mounted to my roof. Each one of those is rated for 285 watts a piece. Each one of them has an Enphase IQ6 Plus microinverter mounted to it. So it is a microinverter system and I am a huge fan of Enphase Plus their microinverter inverters. My solar panels are mounted to my roof that is a 12-12 pitch, so that's a 45 degree angle. Ideally, my angle would have been whatever my latitude is, and my latitude is 37.7 degrees. So ideally, my roof would have been a 9-12 pitch to get the most optimal uh, performance out of my system but it's on a 45 degree angle and that's just what it is. On top of that, my house is situated to where it is about 20 degrees off of uh, south facing. So it's actually 20 degrees towards the east, which again is not ideal. But many of you are gonna be installing these systems on a house that isn't necessarily in an ideal situation. So I'm trying to give you a real world snapshot of what production looks like on something like this. Take a look at this graph of the power that my solar produced from February of 2021 through May of 2022. And note just how flat that curve is. It's pretty darn flat. And there are times, sure, where there's little dips and that sort of thing. But in those instances, a lot of times there was a lot of storms and a lot of clouds. So it was a little bit artificially uh, down in those particular times. But what astonished me was the production during the winter months versus the summer months are very close to each other and I think that has to do with the angle of my roof. Since it's an increased angle it favors those colder months a little more than it favors those summer months. If we pick a time period of 12 months through there we're going to call it May of 21 through April of 22 I made 8,705 kilowatt hours of power. So how much did this save me? Well, to know that, you have to really dive deep into your electrical bill. I did not just take the total dollars that I spent on my electrical bill and divide it by the kilowatt hours used. That would not be an accurate way to do it. And the reason is there's certain charges that are just fixed costs. For example, I have a $35 uh, customer charge that they charge every month. Doesn't matter if I use zero watts or a million watts, I have to pay that $35 every single month. They also have a peak demand charge, which for me averages about $15 a month. So those are things that are a bit outside of the per kilowatt hour cost. So my per kilowatt hour our cost came out to roughly 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And again, that did not include that customer charge or anything really to do with that peak demand charge. So that 8,705 kilowatt hours of production saved me $870.05. I made this video right here showing all of the costs associated with my solar system. But if we take the total costs after the federal tax credit that I got, it was $5,671.65. So if we wanna know how long it takes just to get that money right back out it takes six years and six months but that's also assuming that I wouldn't have done anything else with that money it would have just sat uh, stagnant basically so if we said that either I borrowed this money at 6% interest or I had this money and instead of putting it in solar I put it in the stock market at a 6% return it increases the time of payback to eight years and three months that's a little more of a realistic way to look at the payback period for your solar system solar is generally considered to have a 25 year lifespan so you have to remember though that the solar panels as well as those microinverters do degrade over time but they generally have a warranty that covers them for that 25 year period to have at least 80% of its original output capacity. So while production will come down over time, generally speaking, the cost per kilowatt hour of what you are offsetting will go up over time. So if we just 
made it simplistic and said those two rates are equal. One goes down, the other goes up at an equal rate. My system over that 25 year lifetime would give me $21,762.50 worth of output value. And remember the cost for the whole system was only $5,671.65. So it turns out to be a pretty decent investment. And especially if your cost per kilowatt hour is higher, uh, generally you're gonna pay back faster, assuming that you can get all of this installed for a cheap enough price. Obviously the more that you spend on that system, the longer it's gonna take to recover that cost. But just for the fun of it, I decided to look at the Enphase stock because believe it or not, back in the day, I used to own a bunch of that. So if I would have taken that $5,671 and bought Enphase stock right at that same time that I put my solar system live, which would have been in June of 2018, the cost per share was $5.69. Well, as of this morning of making this video, the cost now for one share of Enphase is $177.71. So I could have bought 993 shares back in the day and sold it today for $176,466. Way better than just putting up the solar system, but you know, I don't have a crystal ball and there's no guarantee that something like that would work. I just found it interesting that uh, a product that I put up there, just investing in that company would have made me so much more money. Let me know down in the comments, if you guys have installed a solar system, how much it cost and what the payback period time was for it, or is at least projected to be. And remember, have it be at least say a 6% return over that time, not just getting your seed money back. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.